Okay, welcome to part three of my series on service workers. This episode, we're going to be talking about the skip waiting, wait until, and claim functions. Now, we're going to do this in between the previous video, which was all about the cache API and integrating the cache into service workers, because we're going to want to use the wait until um, as part of this. And so these three methods, skip waiting until and claim, wait until and claim, they kind of work together. They help each other out. All right. So we have here a simple web page. I've got no service worker registered at the moment. So I'm going to jump into the code and in my main script for the page, I've got a couple of functions. One, which all it does when I click on the H2 element, it's going to add an image to the page. So if I come in here, if I click on this H2, it fetches an image and brings it back and loads it onto the page. All right, so that's the H2 handler. And then I've got this second function for registering my service worker. I just put the code in there. This was covered in the previous video, how to register it and then save it globally so we can access it later on. All right, now when I save this, this is going to automatically register my service worker, which is this file right here. And I've got my install listener, my activate listener, my fetch listener, my message listener. I have nothing inside of here. We're not doing anything with messaging yet, but the first three functions, I'm writing out a message about installed, activated, and every time there's a fetch request. So with just these three messages in here, I'm going to save this so it reloads and you can see that a service worker was registered on the page. If I come in here, we can see installed and activated. So those two events have happened, but I want to draw your attention to one thing that didn't happen here. This page loaded, it ran, it loaded the CSS, it loaded this image, which means it made requests for those, but the fetch calls did not take place here. So we didn't have the service worker intercepting those fetches. And that's going to happen the first time, the very first time you load a service worker, when you register it and it installs and it activates, that very first time, by default, it's not going to be listening for the fetches. The fetches have already happened on the page. They're not going to be intercepted. If I refresh the page, so all I have to do is refresh. Now you can see that, yes, indeed, it is actually picking up all of these. I'm no longer seeing the message about installed and activated because that happened the previous time the page was loaded when it registered the service worker. But we do get now the fetch requests. And every subsequent time from this point on, I will get those fetch requests. So it is intercepting every one of those requests or they're passing through every single time. Okay, so these methods that we're talking about, why do we have them? Well, the install, the activate, the fetch, and the message, all four of these events are what's known as extendable events. They're a special class of event. They are uh, inheriting from the top level event object but they're designed for service workers specifically. And the reason that we have them is the service worker is always trying to sort of shut itself down. It doesn't want to use up system resources. So, or the browser wants to shut it down so it's not using up system resources. So whatever code we put inside of here, the browser wants to be done that as soon as possible and say, all right, I'm done. Can I put this aside so I can go back to dealing with the web page? which is great. That's what you want. You want to be able to save system resources, but sometimes you need to do something that is going to take a little bit of time. So before this is finished running, we're going to need to tell it, you know what, can you hold on just a minute? And that's what this EV wait until does. Whatever we put inside of here, this is going to be a promise. So, it's expecting to get a promise and it will wait until this promise is resolved. All right. So right now, let's say I had two functions. Uh, one could be to set something up with a cache. One could be to set something up with an index database. 
All right, but I'm just going to make up a couple of functions here. Uh, I'm going to have one called uh, Teja and one called uh, Manuel. We'll come down here and we'll create these functions. And all we're going to put inside right now is a console log. Okay, so now we have a brand new service worker. You can see at the end of this that the service worker was installed and it did run those two functions. These are just synchronous functions, not a big deal. So I can run synchronous code here. This isn't going to create a task, an asynchronous task that happens later on. So it has no problem finishing this before the install. Now, the activate has not happened yet. So if I come down in here and I actually, before I make this into an asynchronous thing, let's get the activate to work. So we have wait until, which we know is going to give us a little bit more time. We can wrap up a bunch of things inside of a promise, get a little bit of time. There's also this method, skip waiting. And this method is going to tell the browser, you know what, don't bother waiting for the next time all the tabs are dead or for the developer to come in and hit that skip waiting button or the refresh um, checkbox right up here. So don't worry about the developer clicking on this or clicking on this and then reloading the page. What we want to do is the same thing as clicking on this programmatically, I want to tell it, don't bother waiting. So I save that. The new service worker has been activated. And if we look in the console, sure enough, there's the install with the other functions that we're calling and now activated. But it is important to note that this page is still not going to use anything having to do with the service worker until the next time it's refreshed. So although we told it to go ahead and activate it, this page is still sitting there going, okay, great, there's a brand new one, but I'm going to wait until the next time I'm reloaded. So it's kind of like doing this. I put the check mark here to say, okay, the next time you refresh the page, we're going to get the new one. So how do I avoid this? Because this worker is not going to be used until I actually refresh the page. So if I click on here, Okay, there was the new one loaded, and this is actually being run from the old service worker. So let's come back in here. We're going to unregister. So that deletes it. I'm going to refresh the page. And now we've got the new one installed. It's run. It's activated. We have it activated. If I click on here, there we go. We do not have the fetch running. So again, come back in here. We get rid of the old service worker. I refresh the page. It loads the new one, but I don't yet have the fetch available to me. So the new latest version of the service worker is not going to be working for me. This page is still working on the old version, even though in here, Hey, yeah, we've activated a brand new one. This page right here is still working on that old one. So what do we do? That's where the claims function comes in. So let's come down here. Inside of the activate, we can say clients.claim. And there's actually, this is a promise, so we could have a function inside of here, and we'll write out. All right, so this activated, the new one. If we come back in here, it now says the service worker has now claimed all pages so that they'll use it. So just activating didn't mean that this was doing anything. It wasn't using that new service worker, but because I've called the claim clients.claim, 
now, when I click on this, it does. It does use that fetch request. So it is actually using the new one. So to review, skip waiting means skip the waiting to activate. That's what the skip waiting does. But, but the new service worker is not going to be using uh, or used by the old HTML file. The claim. Okay, so skip waiting means go ahead and activate it after it's been installed. Claim means tell the web pages they're supposed to start using me now. So we can do this on any service worker. It's just something that you need to be careful about. If you've made breaking changes, if you've changed something significantly in the code that could adversely affect the web page, we just need to be careful about doing this. So it's like you're going into people's browsers, you're going to the application tab and you're checking off skip waiting or update on reload and the, the skip waiting button every time. All right, now coming back to the wait until, which is what we started with. What if we've got a couple of things here that have delays? So we're gonna take this function and I'm gonna say return a new promise And there's my function inside of here. I'm going to put my console.log statement inside of here, but this is going to run almost immediately. So I'm going to add a set timeout. So now this function is actually an asynchronous function. It's one that's going to start off, but it can't return until the promise has resolved. So I will do the console.log first and then we'll call the resolve. So the resolve is going to happen two seconds after the install event. So let's take a look in the console to see what's going on there. Oh, we gotta get rid of the old service worker because we are telling it to skip every single time. All right, so refresh, there we go. So installed, we get this function's being called right here. This one's being called right after the installed message is happening, but then the activated is happening and then the service workers are being claimed. And then we've got this set timeout, this delayed asynchronous function happening. So it's messing with the order that we're doing things. We're not actually waiting. And that's the kind of thing that we can get away from with wait until. We can actually force things to wait and we have the install event say, no, 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 I'm not finished yet. I'm still installing. So let's take a look at doing that. We will come inside of here. I'll uncomment this. And then inside of here, we can do things like talking with the caches, which is going to be the next video that I do, integrating the caches into here. Talking to the database, talking to the caches, things like that will be done inside of here. Um, I'm going to take off the skip waiting and I'm going to take off the call to claim just so I can manually control when the updates are taking place. Inside of wait until, remember it's a promise, so we're going to say promise.resolve. That is the resolve. Um, so that's, it's done. And it would come back to this and then it would say, okay, I'm done installing at this point. We're going to start chaining on a bunch of then methods. And this is how we're going to allow ourselves to create some sort of sequence. If you need to do several things, this is how we're going to do it. So we can say inside the first one, what I want to do, simple enough, I'm going to call this function right here, which is just a synchronous function. So we're going to take Manuel and we're going to put it up inside the first resolve. All right. After that, what do we want to do? We're going to run another function that is wrapped inside of here. And this one 
we're going to return whatever comes back from here. Well, this is returning a promise. So the function teja is going to return a promise, which comes up to here. And then the return wants to pass the promise on, but it can't do that. This then will not accept it until this promise resolves. It knows that it's a promise, so it'll sit and wait. My keyboard is double typing several letters, including the T's, which is why I have to go back and make these corrections all the time. Okay, so we have that done. And then I'm going to take my installed and make this the final step in this process. When I get to this point now, I'm done my chain. So these are the three things I want to do. My wait until wants a promise. So fine, I'm going to create a promise, resolve starting my chain, and I've got then, 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 then. At the end of this, whatever is returned from here, like this is a function, so by default it's going to return undefined. That's what's going to come up to wait until, and it really doesn't care what comes back to it. It will just say, okay, the promise chain is done. I'm allowed to say that we're finished installing. We are now installed. All right, so let's take a look. Manuel, Teya, installed. There were the three things, and there was a delay here. So if we refresh this, back in here, when we skip waiting, oh, let's unregister that so it installs again. That's what we want to do, not activate it. Okay, so we're installing. And you'll notice the manual showed up and then there was a delay before Teja showed up. That is the timeout. So all these three things happening and installed and then activated is coming in after that. So we have wait until that allows us to do a chain of things. It could be one thing. Um, if it's dealing with the cache, maybe it's just this one cache open and add all. That's all we're doing with the cache. But it's going to let us do a series of things wrapped in promises. And then the install is finished when that is all done. After that happens, that's when the activate happens. The activate can be triggered by us calling our skip waiting right here. And it is self.skip waiting. So it is the service worker we're saying skip waiting, not the event. Wait until is on the event object. Skip waiting is on the service worker. And if we get to activate, we're past the point of skip waiting. We've gotten to activate. Either it's programmatically or through us coming in here and clicking on the skip waiting button, whichever one it is, we can then call the clients.claim to force any attached web pages to start using our service worker at that point. All right, so quite a few concepts in there. Um, hope that makes sense to you. The finished version of this code is available down in the description, a link to a code just for it. Um, I've got links in the description as well for the documentation on MDN for wait until skip waiting and clients.claim. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I'll answer as many as I have time for. And as always, Thanks for watching.